Hey there and welcome, my name is Wendy. I love to talk about minimalism, decluttering, simplifying, things that will make your life smoother and more fluid and just help you to feel like you're spending time and energy on the things that matter the most to you. And today we are talking about books. Books have been known to accumulate and they are chronic dust collectors. For years I carried around books, all around the country in fact. We moved often as a young family and I would carry these boxes of books from home to home and unpack them and then I'd pack them again and we'd move them to the next place and it was a real shock to me when someone told me that I could get rid of a lot of them, that I didn't need them. So today I want to show you how I've done it and just ways that you can decide for yourself which books are most important to you and which books can actually go and that it's perfectly fine to do that. Decluttering is never a once and done thing. I've been doing this for a number of years now and I still feel like a bit of a novice at it. It's not something that you will always be able to master completely and your home will possibly always want to fill up with things. As our family grows and as we purchase things, uh, they start to accumulate again and we have to revisit what we had once thought was done. And so this is what I'm going to do today with my bookshelf. I'm just going to declutter some of the books, make sure that I have got what I need, but also make Making sure I'm not holding on to things that I really don't need anymore. It was a huge surprise to me that I was allowed to get rid of books. They were always something that were precious. There's a lot of money invested in them, there's a lot of memories invested in some of them. Often they're books that have been given to us, they're books that have been handed down. Some of them are books from our own childhood or maybe they're things that you've read to your own children that you treasure. Right now I've been going through a lot of Marie Kondo's The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. It's where it first started for me, it's the thing that pivoted me the most into significant change and that was decluttering my home. I heard it recently from someone who follows the fly lady, you cannot clean clutter and no matter how much you go around just moving things and wiping things, you can't actually clean anything when you are just constantly being, it's all kind of tumbling in on you and that's what it felt like for me and so it started with clothing and I've done a few videos on that and now I'm doing books. Books are often in every room of our home. They're in the kitchen, they're in the living area, they're in the bedrooms, they're beside our bed and so they can take up a lot of space and they take up a lot of time and energy looking after them and so we want to eliminate a lot of that with the books today. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do it because I'm going to do it to my bookshelf that I haven't looked at for a while, probably a about a year maybe. I haven't actually collected together the books and really had a good look. So I'm going to do that with you now and show you how you can do it in your home. So if you're wanting to get rid of your books, if you've never done this before, what I suggest you do is make sure you've got a box near you for a place to put books that you no longer require. You might have 40 books that you're wanting to get rid of. So these are going to go in a box that you can either sell them or you can give them away depending on their condition, depending on their value, depending on their popularity. So that will be your choice. You won't necessarily need a rubbish bin unless of course you keep a lot of magazines and newspapers on your bookshelf in which case you will need a rubbish bin to put old newspapers and magazines possibly but to get started what you need is a box for books that you no longer want a place to put them so that you can move them away from the bookshelf now you're going to do that at every single spot in your home wherever there is a bookshelf if you have one in the lounge one in the bedroom one in the kitchen one beside your bed Every single spot in your house, you're going to do every bookshelf in your home and deal with books all at once. That means that books are dealt with. You will be able to tick them off your list as decluttered. And there really is only one simple way, and that is to hold a book and decide for yourself whether or not it's something that you would like to hold on to and keep, or maybe it's something that is of no interest. No one in your home is ever going to read it, so give it away to someone who is actually going to treasure it. I'm just going to talk about the other types of books that you will come across. One is magazines and newspapers. Take a picture of the article that meant the most to you. Maybe it's got some cool ideas in there that you would like to replicate. Do be careful about how many magazines you keep. Just keep a few for reference, but the rest really don't have to be held on to by you. Unless, of course, you're a magazine editor and they're your books and you're going to keep every single one of them, in which case they are a treasure. Textbooks, I have got a manual here that I was working through for a lot of years that I no longer work through. A lot of the notes and things that came with it or pamphlets that supported the work doesn't necessarily need for me to hold on to. So that can be binned or burned. And that's the same with you and your textbooks. Maybe it's a thesis and you did a lot of research on that for a full year or a, or a chunk of time and it meant a lot to you to keep that research. Then it becomes a keepsake, a little bit more than a book. So you're gonna find a special spot for that and a place where you can treasure it a bit better but for now it's not a book and unless you really need to keep it I would be very careful about keeping textbooks because 
they go out of date, they're no longer relevant, and it's not something that you need to delve into very often, if you, especially if you're not working in that particular area anymore. Same goes with notebooks and lecture notes. Take a little bit of a glimpse, but often we do not need them anymore, especially if they're years and years old. Just be prepared to say goodbye to them. Cookbooks is another one. I was able to get rid of a lot of cookbooks. Most people today can search Google, uh, very quickly and find a recipe that suits. I have decided to keep cookbooks that are either super, super practical or ones that are a little bit more than a cookbook. They're almost a resource. Books I'm thinking of like Nourishing Traditions. That is not just a recipe book. That is a lifestyle. It's so much health knowledge in there. So I've got the Nourishing Traditions and I Quit Sugar and I like the Whole Food book from Dr. Libby's. I've got four books that I've used for years and years that I love and I've got one book that I keep kind of homemade home recipes in that I just I like it I've got this old book from my grandmother I keep it in a plastic bag it's got sauces in it and it's just a, a special keepsake I've got a flatter's cookbook that my kids use all the time and there's a little meat uh, manual that shows me how long to cook meats for that I always refer to so not a huge selection but I've definitely got cookbooks children's books these can be a headache because there can be a lot of them now I would suggest going through them with your children first and then you go through them again for yourself because sometimes they will throw out books that are actually heirlooms <laughs> and you don't want them gone and other times they will throw out like not much and you know that there's a lot more that could go. Do give them a bit of an ultimatum just think you know unless you really love this book we're, we're not going to keep it. Uh, I have ones that I read to my 20 something year old years ago I will never get rid of them some of those golden books maybe one day I'll be able to read them to my grandchildren who knows? One point I want to make there is that children will never be as excited as you are to get rid of things. Everything wants to be collected and gathered and everything is special because you've taught them that books are to be looked after. So they're not going to want to throw them out, but just baby steps, get them to take away from their bookshelf just a few and maybe you'll be able to get rid of a few without them realizing, but it's also a case of just make sure that from now on you're only purchasing books that they're really going to love maybe utilize the library for a while and make sure that you're only going to be purchasing books that they read and reread and that you all enjoy as a family rather than just purchasing anything it's just a case of now that you know about decluttering and that you don't have to own every book on the planet you can start to make a few better choices when you're buying books for your kids so once you have been through all of your books and you have decided that there are quite a few that you do not need anymore, you're going to get that box and you're going to do something with it. You can either start listing them on Trade Me or, sorry, that's a New Zealand company that sell things online. You could do Facebook Marketplace. Maybe there might be a church facility or a secondhand store that could take them and sell them for you. I know that that's an option sometimes. One cool option is to bundle up a whole lot of children's books that maybe are subject related or author related and you can sell them as a group. And sometimes people think, oh look, there's a whole lot of Beatrice Potter. You might not be able to sell individual books, but you can sell groups of them. And that's often been a successful way for me to get rid of some books and still get some money back for the investment that I made. Maybe it's a case of you're just not going to get much for them and you're just going to have to get rid of them. You are quite likely to be fearful about getting rid of your books um, and so you want to hold on to them for a bit longer just in case you need them. But like I said, most books can be repurchased. Marie Kondo would often say get rid of them immediately because if you leave it around that they'll kind of sneakily end up back in the house or being read by the children again and then you're back to square one with it not having gotten rid of anything and it's not because they wanted that book and missed it it's because it was there they saw it and they just had another look so it does pay to action the item as soon as possible either keep it in the boot of the car while you're trying to sell them or put them in a safe space under the desk in the office away or maybe hide them under the bed just until you've sold what you want to but if you can get rid of the things pretty quickly you you actually should so to get started, I want you to listen to the analogy that I was taught by Marie Kondo in her book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Think of your books as belonging to the Hall of Fame. You want to treasure it, you want to own it, you want to keep it on your shelf and be able to pull it out when you need it and love having the book in your care. Because we all have our favorites. They're the books that we first read to our children, that were read to us as children. They're books that have 
cost a lot or been given as beautiful gifts. Maybe they are books that have taught you a lot. You have dog-eared and highlighted so many things in there that you want to be able to always have it as a reference. These books are our Hall of Fame books and these books you should absolutely hold on to. But then if you look at some books, they aren't books that you have opened very recently. Even some of the books that we love, we don't open all the time. But these ones that have never been referred to, ones that have never been read, we meant to read them but we never did. Ones that we hoped to teach us guitar or teach us how to crochet. If you haven't used them recently, like within the last year, I can almost guarantee you're not going to. Whatever way that you're going to learn to do crochet is not from that book. You're going to find some other way because you've had the opportunity and you haven't used it. And I can also guarantee you that if you did get rid of that guitar book and you truly missed it and really felt the need to try again, you could go and purchase another one. So always keep in mind that a lot of the times we think that throwing something away or getting rid of it, it's going to be the end of a dream or a desire. It's not. There's so many ways that you can replace those items again. Books are often available to us. So I just want you to keep that in mind when you are sorting through your books. I'm going to show you how I do mine right now. And that is, do they belong in the Hall of Fame? Is this something I want to be able to share with my children when they grow up? Or is it a book that it really doesn't make any difference to you whatsoever whether you own it? It's something that meant something to you at one stage, but it no longer does. So I'm just going to go through mine and I'm going to show you a little bit of how I make some of the decisions. I'm not going to show you the whole lot because that would be boring, but I will show you some of the things if I have to make a change. Straight away there's a small novel that my daughter went on and read a whole lot but we got them in ebook fashion and um, I don't need to keep that first one. These are two pretty books from when I was a kid. One's very pretty and one's got full of quotes in it that I want to keep it more readily available. There's a number of children's kind of stories that I'm looking at, like I'm umming and ahhing. I, I end up asking my son, have you read this? I'm kind of hoping that we will get to read it as a read aloud as a family maybe. There's also that one there that should be in the children's bookshelf. And then we've got The Hobbit, uh, a favourite of ours and probably should be in every bookshelf. No just jokes. And then we've got Harry Potter, another series that I adore and I just love. There's one book that belongs to my friend and these other two books do belong to friends of ours but I don't know that we're ever going to see them again. They live so far away so I'm just going to hold on to them. Maybe we'll see them again one day. There's the Brissinger book my oldest boy read. I'm going to hold on to that for him and give it to him when I see him next. There's a few other books that I know need to go. They're not ones that we've read and I just need to be a bit ruthless here because I've held on to them again and again thinking that oh we might get to them. There's a few other novels. I am denied about some of these. I did come back later that day and I just decided no they need to go. If I'm to be true to what I believe they need to just be gone. They're not being read and we don't ever look at them so someone else can use them. Okay so I have worked out a number of things. I found a whole bunch of yearbooks that belong to my oldest child who is now married. So what I'm going to do is go through and check and see is there any of him in any of these. Also his wife went to the same school so I'm pretty sure that she will have these also. There is two books that belong to other people. This one belongs to my son and this one belongs to a friend of mine I know for a fact. And there were one, two, three, four, five, six books that are no longer required that I will give away in the second hand box. So I've been able to get rid of a stack of things. The very last thing I want to mention is the fact that you can now resource a lot of books on ebook and online. And that has been a lifesaver for me because it is often a third of the price. They're very easily accessible either through your online library, there are places like Libby or Overdrive, and you can get them straight away delivered to your inbox or directly to your advice. Kindle Unlimited is an awesome resource. Scribed. My daughter uses her an old iPad that doesn't have a whole lot of fast internet access and she just accesses all the library books she wants to that way. We all have a Kindle and it's just saved us a lot of accumulation of books and I would highly recommend it as an option instead of purchasing the books. If it's something that they really love, like it's a series that they find they're reading again and again, they might actually like a hard copy and that happened with a horse series my daughter was reading and it's also with another series that I think that we'll get the hard copy of. These Kindles are amazing, you can get Kobos, you can get all sorts of e-readers, they don't have to be a label and it's just a black and white screen, it's not blue light and it's backlit so they can read it in bed at night. It's an awesome option for travel so you don't have to have a lot of books with you even for adults especially but this can have a hundred books on it it can have a thousand books on it and it makes no difference to the size 
And my one last tip is Audible Books. That's always been a favorite for me. It's a way that I've been able to get a lot of books into my head while I've been driving or doing housework or doing errands around town. It's also been a really good option for when we've traveled as a family and the kids aren't necessarily gonna attempt a particular book because it might be a little bit beyond their reading ability. It is a really cool way that you can introduce some of those classic books that they might not attempt by themselves, but they are really cool to read as a family and to think, oh, remember that trip when we listened to Charlotte's Web or we listened to Lord of the Rings? There's a ton of things that you can listen to on Audible, Scribed, there's a number of different Different places that provide ebooks and audiobooks even through your local library so it's just a way of saving you money without having to have piles and piles of books around that you have to look after them and spend a lot of money on so I really hope that this has helped you I hope it's not been too long-winded and that you've been able to see how you could possibly get rid of some of your books and please ask me questions if there's something that I missed I'm just not sure if I've covered everything. So I really hope that you have some success in getting rid of some of these books that are cluttering up your space. And until next time, bye for now.